So on to the next step of how to make a camera for solar graphy. Um, and that involves creating, uh, I call it a shim, basically a piece of aluminium that you then make an aperture in, a, a, a pinhole really. Um, it's not, you know, it's not, a, obviously you don't have a lens, you just have a hole and a piece of metal. Uh, you're then going to make a, a hole in the uh, Pringle pot that you've painted and the piece of metal will be taped over the hole that you've made in here and it will be filled up with paper ready to be used as uh, for making your, your solar graphic. So make a hole in the top, just cutting across there uh, to get started and that will let me get my scissors in and um, cut down through the hole, there's a precision, an incision across the top and I will cut down through that hole in a straight line to the bottom. And when I get to the bottom, you get a hole, slice all the way down, turn around, start cutting the other way. Um, so that really what I'm going to end up doing is cut, I'm cutting off both ends of the can to be left with a sheet of aluminium from which I can make my shims. Okay, shim number one is done. Uh, that's going to be used to cover one of the, the holes in the, the Pringle pot. Um, and I'll make the little square one now. There you go. About the size of I don't know, a 50 pence piece. So, well, if you can imagine a square 50 pence piece. Okay, so I'm gonna now take my pen. I, I think I said to you earlier, you can use a tiny little needle. If you want to get scientific about this, um, the there is a science to making the correct diameter pinhole uh, in relation to what would effectively be your focal length. Your focal length with a, a camera like this is the distance between the point where the the pinhole is on the surface uh, of this camera through to the picture plane, which is the piece of paper as it curls around the back here. So your maximum focal length is the diameter of the base of the Pringle pot, and then that will have an ideal diameter uh, pinhole. So there's actually a, a website online called mrpinhole.com, all in string, M-R-P-I-N-H-O-L-E, Mr. Pinhole, and he has calculators on there that you can reference to uh, work out what would be the ideal pinhole size uh, to get the most accurate, uh, if you like, realistic representation uh, in your photograph. Um, but I'm not going down that road today. I've got my map pin and I'm just going to go ahead and make a, a hole in the middle of the square one. Yeah. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use sandpaper uh, to smooth off. Now, if you go back to the science of it, um, if the diameter of your piece of metal, sorry, not the diameter, the, the thickness of your piece of metal, if that is greater than the diameter of the pinhole, then that will cause diffraction. And again, that will uh, take away from the, you know, the realistic accuracy of the image that's made. So that's why in the beginning, I always use sandpaper to smooth out both sides of the, the shim. 180 is the rough, but, uh, that's big lumpy sandpaper. And uh, I start using that and then go down to the finer grain, uh, which is 400. So give it a good, rub on the silver side because when you stuck if you stuck your pin through the the painted side then the silver side's going to be all burbed up so it's got a bit a good bit to get rid of now you could work away at it and and you know fit, really make it thin around the, the, the hole um and then one thing i always do is just to make sure there's no flaws is get the pin back and and run it through from both directions uh, to make sure it's running clean and we look up at the sunlight make sure it's you can see the hole and it's all nice and round 
And that's you. That, that that's the sort of thing you would use if you want to make a kind of accurate, representative picture uh, using your camera. On the other hand, as I said, you know, if you want to go more abstract, um, if I take this longer shim and make multiple holes in there, um, put five or six uh, holes in a line along the the middle of the foil. I know that what that's going to do, because I've tried it before, is it's going to mean that I'm going to get a much more abstract image. I'll get many more. Um, so let's say I put, in this thing, I've put maybe nine or ten holes. Yeah? And every one of those holes, over the course of a day, will make a line in my piece of photographic paper. Um, so you, as you can imagine, if I do it for a week, then what's that? Ten times... Seven is seventy. There'll be seventy lines on the photo paper, um, and it also means that whatever is out there. Let's say there's a, you know, there's a motor car or uh, there's a bridge in front of where the camera is. Um, you probably won't get a, a good representation of that at all um, because there's so much diffraction and crazy light bouncing around as a result of having these ten pinholes what you're really going to get is um, the lines of the sun. And, you know, that's, uh, to me, that's important. I want to see that and the marks that the sun will make uh, during the time that the camera's up there. One of the things that uh, I didn't mention, I think, uh, when I gave a general overview of the process, uh, an omission, if you will, is that you would normally point these cameras to the south because if you want to observe the arc of the sun, you want to be looking due south uh, so that the arc of the sun goes through the middle of the picture. Um, but you'll still get, it will still work um, if you're anywhere in the 180 degree arc between sort of east and west, uh, passing through south. If you face it north, due north, it's not going to work um, or it will work really badly. Uh, so that's one thing to remember. Okay, now, I've got my two shims that I've made. Uh, one with one hole, one with multiple holes. What do I do next? Well, I've got painted cameras that I've made earlier. What I have to do is, there's my shim, I'll place it on there. Yeah, I'll get a pencil and I'll draw around the shim, just pencil marks, so I know roughly the area um, that that shim would cover. What I now have to, you might not see it in the camera, but I can clearly see the graphite lines that uh, mark the area that that shim can cover. What obviously I need to do is I need to take my craft knife and knife and cut a hole in through the cardboard that's slightly smaller than the metal, so that when I place the metal over it later, it's still going to be light tight once I tape it in place. Okay. I score it before I try and cut through it. So now I've got four, I guess, marks, if you will, like, that uh, will help me more easily. They're like guidelines, um, but it also weakens the surface uh, of the, the, the pot and lets me cut through it. Yeah. Okay. So... That's it coming off there, you know, so not a precise science as you can see, but effective nonetheless. Um, got my pot with a big hole now. Um, as you can see, this shim will cover that and, and slightly more. Um, then you sort of get the, the gaffer tape out, or I've got a little roll of, what is dance floor tape or something, which is less gunky and uh, gooey so what I do is I, I use this for uh, like putting the shim on but then I get the proper gaffer tape out if I want to like tape down the lid and make it light tight uh, so that will just hold that in place for now and what I'll do later is I'll get um, a big thick roll of gaffer tape and do the sides there um, and then do the, the top uh, of the lid once the paper's in there. But importantly, always remember, before you load your paper, get another bit of tape and just 
cover it over the holes as well, right? Because, you know, you kind of, you know, it, it's debatable how important it is to you, uh, depending on what you're doing, but um, normally you don't want to start the exposure until the pot's up in the place that you're trying to photograph, okay? So I think that's pretty much it uh, in terms of the making of it. I uh, spoke to you earlier about the famous telescopic ladder, um, you know, the changing bag for loading, the, the tie wrap that you'll need to uh, tie this up high to a lamp post or a tree or something. Um, and always remember when you go back to bring them down again, you've got your scissors with you and your ladder to, to take them back down. But be careful when you're uh, cutting. Uh, you know, there's a way that you can cut these tie wraps in the right place so you can reuse them again, um, which I always try to do. Okay, so I'm just going to end it there. Uh, if you've got any questions, uh, get my email address and uh, fire off a message to me.